survey, an exclusive survey for Good Morning Britain, has revealed that one in five 18 to 29-year-olds, that's 20% of them, will either completely refuse, absolutely say no, to take a COVID-19 vaccine, if and when they're offered it, or they're still very undecided about whether or not to actually have it at all. Well, as under-30s prepare to be called for the jab next, should those who refuse to take it be able to enjoy the freedom of post-lockdown <coughs> from June the 21st? Joining us now is former Apprentice contestant and columnist Ryan Mark Parsons, who says those who refuse the vaccine are being selfish and deserve to be punished. And social commentator Joanna Jarju, who says it doesn't mean you're stupid if you don't take the vaccine. Good morning to both morning. of you. I mean, Joanna, let's start with you on this one, because there are those then who say that if you choose not to have the vaccine, then you should sacrifice freedoms because of it. No, I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I think anything that, you know, erodes people's civil civil liberties, specifically when it's something that's a decision about health, is completely wrong. I think looking at the under 30s specifically, when we look at the vaccine rollout, the uptake of it has been huge by people that are elderly and people that are vulnerable. And we're looking at the numbers now, and literally just the other day, there were zero deaths, and most under 30s haven't even been vaccinated yet. So I think people have got into this bubble of, you know, looking at um, vaccinations and being really judgmental to people, a small section of society, actually, who don't want to get vaccinated right. and wanting to alienate them. OK. And I think that but the priorities are completely wrong, because when we look globally, our main problem at the moment is the Indian variant. And I would much rather somebody that's over 60 in India actually get the vaccine at the moment. I think that's a lot more productive. OK, well, let's, let's actually... take it. All right, let's, sorry, we're trying to come in, but we've only got about six minutes here, so I want to get through a few points. Let's take it back to what you said initially, that you don't think that we should be told what to do when it comes to our health. I'm old enough. I'm probably three times older than you. I remember exactly these points being made when smoking was banned in pubs and restaurants and clubs. And there was a huge movement that said that this was actually infringing on civil liberty, that people should be allowed to smoke where they wanted. People weren't being stopped smoking, but they were being told not to smoke in the presence of others inside because it was bad for the other people's health. Surely this is a very good parallel with what we're talking about now. To be vaccinated is actually not just to protect you, it's to protect people around you. Well, the people who need protecting have been vaccinated and we've seen, you know, um, the, the reduction in the number of deaths and also the number of cases. The other day we had zero deaths in this country and under 30s haven't even been vaccinated yet. Mm. Surely if a small percentage of under 30s have that right and say, I don't want to take the vaccine or I'm unsure about the vaccine, then that's their individual right. But I don't think you, that's but, a but, but why wouldn't you, but what's up, sorry, why wouldn't you want the vaccine? I mean, you seem to be arguing it on a point of principle rather than a point of medicine. Why would you not want to have the vaccine? It's not going to hurt you and it's going to protect you. What possible reason could you have other than this point of principle that you're arguing not to have it? But that's you, Richard, saying that it's not going to hurt me. And don't get me wrong, I'm not an anti-vaxxer and I'm not a, um, I'm not a, you know, conspiracy theorist or anything like that. I've taken things like the HPV jab. For me, I, with things like this with my health, I look at risk, risk and reward. So when I was taking the HPV jab, fine, that was for, for cervical cancer. With this specifically, as an under 30, 27 year old fit person, I don't think it's necessary at the moment. And I think we're beyond the point of calling people selfish because there's actually a lot of people who have made a lot of sacrifices, as has everybody else in the country. Throughout the vaccine, they've isolated when they've needed to, they've done everything that's been asked of them, but now it's come to something that's an individual right for people, and I don't think that they should okay. be alienated okay. for making well, that choice. Let's bring okay. in Ryan Mark at this point. You know, What do you make of this? Joanna's saying it. it's not selfish, but it's just a question of civil liberties here, that people have a right to choose what goes in their bodies. Well, to be honest with you, I think she's talking a load of garbage. It is beyond boring now listening to under 30s sanctimoniously preaching from their high horse because somehow they think they're immune from the virus and they don't have to do their bit to protect others from this vaccine, uh, from this virus. I've had this conversation with many friends and I'm willing to cut people off if they're not willing to get out there get the jab and protect others from this virus. I'm done with people like Joanna lecturing the public, lecturing the viewers at home, saying, well, I'm under 30, I'm not really at risk, it's okay. 
my body, my choice, this philosophical junk, and it needs to be stopped. I tell all people under 30, anyone I meet, get the jab once you're called. As soon as I get called, I'm going to be getting the jab. And we saw that as well at Twickenham Rugby Stadium, hundreds of young people flocking to get the vaccine because they want to protect other people's and lives. Ryan, and, that, and that's their and choice. Ryan, and Ryan, you think, you think that people in your age group, this 20% this who've told us on GMB that they're not going to have the jab or, they, or they're thinking of not having the jab, you think that, that, if that if they carry on with that, they shouldn't be allowed, what, into public places, they shouldn't be allowed into concerts, into clubs, into pubs, into restaurants? Yeah, absolutely. They should be punished for that. They cannot enjoy the civil liberties of other people if they're not going to do their bit for the country. If they're not going to go out and get a simple jab to protect others, then they have no right to go to the pubs and go to the restaurants and the theatres. They deserve to be punished. And I've told my friends this as well. In fact, I have blocked my friends who have said they're not getting the jab. They are dead wood in my eyes. Okay, Hillary. I'm not be taken. Yeah, we should bring in Dr. Hillary here actually yeah. to talk about this because yes. Joanna made the point there, didn't she, that she felt that you know people who needed protection had already been vaccinated. So from the point of view of, of having the vaccination to protect other people, that had kind of been covered. But but it doesn't mean that everyone's protected, does it? What do you make of this? No, I think I certainly wouldn't judge uh, Joanna, and I certainly wouldn't call her stupid, not by any stretch of the imagination. But I think she's blinkered. I mean. She She's out of date already. There were 12 deaths yesterday, not zero. It's gone up, uh, you know, compared to the, the bank holiday. And we're seeing increasing numbers of cases. We're seeing hospitalizations. We're still seeing um, people very seriously ill and, and children being admitted to hospital by the rate of 100 a week with long COVID inflammatory, multi-system infl inflammation. So uh, she's ignoring all that. She's also ignoring the people who've had their vaccines because they're vulnerable, but don't make antibodies. Children with cancers. Um, we talked to the CEO of Facebook recently, who's got a, a lymphoma, and said that she she had her vaccinations, no antibodies produced. So she's still very vulnerable. As are ten percent of the elderly who've been vaccinated, okay. but but uh, f for some reason the vaccination hasn't given them protection. If this was tuberculosis, if this was polio, it would be mandatory. If people were being paralysed by a virus or, or, or losing their lives to respiratory infection th through TB and consumption, as it used to be called. It would be mandatory. It's not mandatory, but people have civil liberties who've been vaccinated too. They have civil liberties right. to be protected as much as possible. So, Joanna, the doctor, the good doctor is saying that you're not stupid, and of course you're not, but you're completely wrong. You're, you're, you're just blinkered. And he makes the point about polio, which is mandatory, um, to protect society. Can you not see the parallel? For me, when it comes to this vaccine, I think um, people who are vaccine hesitant or, you know, have completely said that they don't want to take the vaccine and not a monolith. I think there's people who are, you know, at the extreme of things and people like me who aren't anti-vax. I've actually come a long way to, since last year in terms of how I view the vaccine. But for me at the moment, I just feel as if when I look at the, what's happening globally and I look at all the variants that are happening, instead of imposing rules on under 30s and basically hitting them with a stick right now, we should be making sure that uh, more variants aren't developing in other countries because people who are being vaccinated here anyway, it could turn out that the, the um, virus could mutate to a point where the vaccine that you're taking doesn't work anyway. So I feel like people are so bogged down with judging others, judging their neighbours, their friends, whatever, but... It, for me, it boils down to if somebody doesn't want right. to do something with their body, then it's their choice. Well, there's no, there's no time to develop the, the last point you made there. You say that the, the, uh, there'll come a point when the current vaccines don't work because of the mutations to the virus, but then we'll have Actually, boost... Yeah. But hang, hang on, then we'll have booster jabs standing by to, to accommodate that. But, but the, the, the greater number of people who remain unvaccinated, the under 30s, the yep. greater the number, the greater the incubation opportunities for, for the virus to mutate. Right. So they're increasing the problem. They're, they're, they're likely to create a variant that is resistant to vaccine and we go back to square one. Could undo all the good work that's been achieved. OK, everyone's had their say. Thank you very much.